fellow fifth graders and anyone else who is watching. Uh, I don't know if you've ever had the privilege to get to go to a priestly ordination mass before. And if you have, wonderful. I've been to a few. I've been to my own, <laughs> obviously speaking. There's a point during the priestly ordination where the priests go before our bishop and our bishop anoints our hands and our forehead with oil, and he lays his hands down upon us. And some of you may be going like, what the heck is up with that? Why, why is that super important or whatever? Or wondering the implications or the significance thereof. And this has to do with apostolic succession. So, what does that mean? What does that fancy term mean? So, the, the apostles, they get all of their authority their teaching authority, their liturgical authority, their sacramental authority. They get all of their authority, pardon me, they get all of their authority from Jesus, from God. It is God who gives them the authority. Hey, go out into the world. Whoever sins you forgive are forgiven. Whoever sins you retain are retained. Go out into the world and proclaim my teachings. Do this in memory of me. All of this they get from God. All of their authority to teach, to proclaim, to say mass, to administer the sacraments, to ordain other priests and bishops, comes from God. God gives it first to those eleven, and they spread out and give it to others. And they, uh, St. Paul in his writings has a whole like um, uh, doctoral clarification on the, the, um, the qualities that are required to be a bishop and a priest and a deacon, etc., etc., etc. When we say apostolic succession, we mean then that that authority from God to the apostles has been handed down to all the other priests and bishops throughout the centuries in perfect succession and union. Every priest and every bishop traces their lineage back to the apostles. Every ordained Catholic minister comes from the ordination of someone else who was ordained by someone else, a bishop, then bishop, then bishop, then bishop, and going back all 2,000 years to the apostles, so that that transmission of authority remains connected. And to, again, showcase the authority comes from God. So there's never a Catholic, I mean, you'll see people do this from time to time, but I mean officially, uh, uh, you never have someone who just on their own accord goes, I'm a priest now. Catholic priest. And the Catholic Church would be like, cool, you're a priest now. Here's a church. You never have someone that goes, I'm a bishop now. And the Catholic Church goes, cool, you're a bishop. Have a, have a diocese. It isn't something that is just pridefully taken and decided upon. It's gifted to and administered to through that kept succession. So in order to receive that authority, the teaching authority, the authority to teach the gospel and, and scripture and the faith, the authority to administer the sacraments, the authority to say the Mass, the if you're a bishop or, or hired, the authority to ordain priests. That authority, that power, comes from an indelible mark on the soul administered at holy, hour, holy orders, and it is passed down from bishop to bishop to bishop who first received it from the apostles, who first received it from Jesus. So the apostolic succession, therefore, is saying that all of our all of our current priests, all of our current clergy, received their holy orders from other priests, from other bishops who received theirs from bishops, etc., going all the way back to the apostles. And that line, that connection throughout the centuries of succession is unbroken. You don't have a actual credible, formally ordained priest or bishop that is so credibly and authoritatively ordained from someone outside of that line. You can't just willy-nilly be like, I'm a priest now, and go, despite what some other um, faiths or traditions or practices may have you. It's all in that connection. And again, to show that the priest and the bishop is a servant, a servant of the church, a servant of God's people, and that their power is not something that they claim for themselves. It's handed on and gifted. That's why we're on our knees when the hands come. It's a sign of servitude and humility. That's why the bishops like you promised to be an authority to me and my successors. We're servants as the apostles were servants, as all the others have been servants. 
servants of God's church, servants of God's people. And so this is all in an accounting of humility to receive that gift of that authority and to then carry out that mission we have been gifted with. It's all in keeping with that apostolic succession. There's, uh, I don't know the website off the top of my head, uh, and I apologize for that, but there's actually records that bishops can look up all the centuries back of um, who their successor, who their bishop was that ordained them, their bishop was. The, and that's actually why, um, ordinarily speaking, when a bishop is consecrated to be a bishop or a priest is consecrated to be a, a bishop, when they're elevated to the next state of, of holy orders, typically there's three bishops there to do the, the consecration, the laying on the hand, and this is done as a safeguard to make sure that, hey, on the off chance, this guy isn't actually a bishop because he didn't receive his holy orders credibly or whatever. The other two do the backup to make sure all of this is kept in, um, in place and in line. So that's what we mean by apostolic succession, that every priest, every bishop, every cleric is a successor to the apostles. And their authority and their teaching authority, their sacramental authority, their liturgical authority is granted to them, passed down to them through that succession that all leads back to the apostles. And the apostles first get it from Jesus. So all of this then is in that connection to our Lord. So that's the apostolic succession. So if you're next time at a priestly ordination and you're seeing all the, the laying on down on hands, that's the that's the gravity of it is that you are now the next successor in a line of successors dating back 2000 years that start with Jesus and go to his 11 apostles and then have spread across the church in two millennia that's the the gravity of this that you are part of a greater whole and the wonderful blessed gifted servant of that greater whole for God so that's what we mean by apostolic succession. That's just, a, again, tidbit, just brief. There's more that goes into it, more that can be developed of it, but that's the first one you hear anyone speak of apostolic succession. That's what we're talking about.